Welcome back to West Texas View. We're visiting with Tom, uh, Todd Luzader, who is the clinical director for the uh, Permian Basin Community Centers for MHMR. And um, he's been giving us some great information that we need to know. And one of the things he said at the break is, it's very important for people to call us if they have any questions or any uh, questions uh, that, they, that they need uh, t uh, definitions about mental health and, and uh, uh, just some, some advice and guidance. Is that correct? Correct, correct. We definitely um, want people to avail themselves of the services we offer in the community. So um, they can visit our website at www.pbmhmr.com. And that's got numbers for all of our services and descriptions of all of our services and 1-800 number so people outside our catchment area can catch mm -hmm. up, can contact us at no cost. Mm -hmm. well. that's, that's great. Well, we were talking before the break about all of the services that you offer. And, and let's talk a little bit about the IDD services. Right. Um, IDD services are services for the um, intellectual and developmentally delayed. Um, that's, form, that's the new term um, or the term that is used these days for what used to be called mental retardation. Um, so we provide We've got several group homes for individuals uh -huh. suffering um, or who have um, mental retardation, and we provide a variety of services for them. They work on some. They work on work crews. We provide vocational services. We provide rehabilitation services and daily skills training ser services that help them um, be a part of the mainstream and manage their own yes. activities of daily living, so they can be as independent as possible. And that's our goal: is to have everybody that we serve is be able to function as independently as they possibly can and, and um, live their lives to the fullest extent possible. Mm -hmm. But one of the problems that we're facing is that right now the legislature is talking about uh, closing some of those uh, community homes. Is that correct? Um, that would be news to me. I, we, we never know what's coming out of the legislature. Oh, okay. So um, often news comes to us late and we have to react to it. And um, you know, we are, our executive leadership team is um, has always guided us in the right what right direction um, we recently our executive director that had been with us for 30 plus years Larry Carroll recently retired um, but our deputy executive director Ramona Thomas has now taken that over and um, um, she's pretty creative in finding ways to keep things going but that leads us to your funding because you are dependent on uh, funding from government aid uh, government uh, uh, coffers but you're also you receive some foundation grants and we do we um, we receive a portion of our funding in the form of contract um, in the in the form of general revenue from the Department of State Health Services a lot of our revenue is generated with third-party billing through Medicaid and private insurance etc but we're also receive um, county and local match from our counties and our cities and um, and, and then we pursue various grants too to, mm -hmm. to, to enhance our service mm -hmm. array. But uh, as, a, as a nonprofit or governmental agency or however you want to say it, you have a lot of dependency on how you can spread out and continue to offer uh, new, and new, and new and better services because of your funding. That's true. That's absolutely true, yes. so. We always hope for a good legislative session. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but, but now tell me, if, if I come to you and I say I have a development, uh, developmentally uh, delayed child and I need help, do I pay for services out of my pocket or my insurance? How do I pay for this? Well, we would bill insurance and we would bill Medicaid, but we don't turn anybody away for an in inability to pay. We've got a sliding fee scale. Um, and some people will pay twenty dollars a month. Some people will pay zero dollars a month. Just depends on your income. Uh -huh. um, is the way the sliding scale uh -huh. works. And so that's another question people can ask when they call in. Oh, absolutely. And We've got dedicated screeners explored. in all of our clinics that can answer those questions. I want for. you to talk just a little bit about about your staff and and. I know that you've got a wonderful group of people that are so dedicated and so uh, passionate about what they're doing. They are. I, um, we're, we, I can't say enough about the staff we have. We've got some, some very dedicated workers that um, I've seen staff on take their own time on a Saturday or 
um, Sunday um, because a client couldn't, couldn't help, couldn't find a mover to help them move um, because they had to leave their apartment quickly with the escalating rent prices we've had in the Permian Basin uh -huh. yes. in the recent years. And, the, and that's stuff they do on their own time. I mean, um, or even so, helping them find another apartment. Absolu oh. Absolutely. Um, you know, um, I think the people that work for us truly have servant's heart. Uh, well, talk, I know that, that you serve every age from the youngest child to senior citizens. So talk about the, the numbers. Uh, do you have more adults or more people under 18? What is your breakdown? Um, the, the majority of what we serve is adults. I mean, if you look at it as a whole, mm -hmm. Um, our, our, our contract at tar Target for Adults is about 1,680 individuals at any given time. Um, at any given time, though, we're actually serving about 1,800, so we're well over serving. And for kids, our target's around 200, and we're always serving around 250 kids. Oh, my goodness. On the mental health side uh -huh. alone. Uh -huh. so. and, and also, I, I know that you collaborate with so many agencies. And so what you can't do or what they can't do, you work together to make sure it gets done. Exactly. Um, that, I mean, that's how our mental health deputy programs came about. There was no funding for those types of things. Um, so our um, executive management teams worked with the sheriffs, and, and we just found a way to get something done that our community needed drastically. So uh -huh. um, I don't think you can say enough about um, um, the value and respect we have for our local stakeholders. And I know you, you have a really good working relationship with the other s service agencies, and you went together and said, we want to really promote Mental uh, Health Awareness Month. Absolutely. Um, you know, um, the only time you think about mental health is when it affects you. Um, That's right. And I think we need to be thinking about it all the time so people can be aware and be proactive in, in what they do to address mental health issues. Yeah. People have a completely different attitude and viewpoint of something until it hits them in the face. I know, I remember back when we had uh, uh, HIV broke onto the scene and, and people were just saying really uh, disdainful things and then all of a sudden it came into their backyard and they changed their, their tune and their viewpoint and their attitude completely. Absolutely, I'm glad you brought that up. We also provide services for individuals suffering from HIV. HIV. <laughs> so. Well, um, we're going to have to close our program today. Do you have one last sentence or a comment that you'd like to say? No, I'd just like to thank you for having us on and encourage um, viewers to visit our website at www.pbmhmr.com and call us with any questions they might have, and we'll, we'll be help, happy to answer them. What a pleasure it's been to have Todd Luzader on our program today, and we will join you next Sunday with another program about mental health. Thanks for joining us for News West 9's West Texas View with Johnny Lou Avery. This has been a public affairs presentation of KWAB-TV and KWES-TV.